Michael Nelson in Georgetown, who apparently has said hello by email, they tell me. Um, my name is Bill Drake, and I'm a senior associate at the Center for International Governance at the Graduate Institute for International and Development Studies in Geneva, Switzerland. And I'm uh, very pleased to see you here. Uh, there's apparently hot competition right now with the open session on critical resources. Everybody's having their say, but we're going to continue along anyway. Uh, this is the workshop on a development agenda for internet governance from principle to practice. Um, let me tell you first who we have on the panel and then I will give you a little background on what this is all about. Um, I should start off by saying that like a lot of other workshops, uh, we've lost people so we are unfortunately today without one of our speakers anticipated speakers, uh, Ambassador Trevor Clark of Barbados, uh, who was unable to attend. So because Trevor isn't here, I will use his time to give you a little bit more background uh, in a second about uh, this workshop and uh, the steps that were taken prior to it. Let me tell you who we have on the panel, um, and I'll do that in the order that they'll be speaking. Uh, the first speaker will be Vitor Hansen. He's the deputy head of the Division of Science and Technology in the Ministry of External Relations of the Government of Brazil. Uh, he's a computer science person uh, who has been involved in the Brazilian diplomatic uh, corps for a while. Um, he has been the desk officer for information society issues since 2006. In that position, he's been in charge of following the WISIS implementation processes in their various branches. He participated in the past uh, IGFs, of course, and he's a member of the multi-stakeholder advisory group of the IGF. The second speaker will be Raul Echeperia. Raul is the executive director of LACNIC, the Internet Address Registry for Latin America and the Caribbean. Raul was a founder of LACNIC and served as chairman of the board between 2000 and, and 2002 when he was appointed the CEO. In addition, he is a member of the board of directors of the Internet Society and also a member of the multi-stakeholder advisory group of the IGF. And you've probably already heard Raul on some of the main sessions. Uh, our third speaker will be Olga Cavelli. Olga is an ICT specialist uh, who's involved in many different things. She is an advisor to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina and is the representative of Argentina both in the WISIS second phase in Tunis and currently in the Government Advisory uh, Committee, the GAC of ICANN, um, as well as in various other types of international meetings. In addition to her work with the government, she's a professor at the University of Buenos Aires, the Technical Institute of Buenos Aires, and various other places. And a small uh, advertisement, she is co-organizing uh, the first South School Summer School on Internet Governance in April in Buenos Aires. People from the region who are interested in learning more about internet governance, that would be a lovely opportunity to do so. Um, our next speaker will be Henriette Esterhuizen. Henriette is the Executive Director of the Association for Progressive Communications, a prominent global NGO in this space. You've probably heard Henriette in some of the main sessions as well. Uh, before uh, taking over the, the lead of APC, Henriette was the executive director of Sangonet, an internet service provider, and ICT training institute uh, in South Africa. Uh, she's been a member of the UN ICT task force and has been a speaker for civil society in many global ICT policy discussions. Um, so we're happy to have her. And finally, and not least, our last speaker is Fiona Alexander. Fiona is the head of the Office of International Affairs in the National Telecommunications and Information Administration of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, the NTIA uh, office that she directs is the lead agency in the United States for policy formation on international communications, working in all the various international institutions. She was uh, the lead negotiator for issues related to internet governance in the WISIS. Uh, the ITU plenipotentiary and various other meetings as well as most recently the OECD ministerial on the future of the internet economy. She oversees and manages NTIA's activities related to the domain name system. In fact, she keeps the zone file in her purse. No, she doesn't do that, I'm kidding. And so we're very happy to have her here with us as well. Um, 
So that's our panel. Uh, before get, turning it over to them, let me talk a little bit about what we're doing here and why. Um, I think that uh, the notion of a development agenda perhaps requires a little bit of explanation, so if you'll bear with me for five minutes or so, I'll try to do that. Um, we've had throughout the WSIS and IGF processes a lot of mentions of the importance of development in relationship to internet governance. And of course, developing country governments have raised many issues of concern to them throughout the process. But despite the various mentions of, in, of development issues, there has not actually been a systematic, focused, and holistic collective consideration of what really are the linkages between development, per se, and internet governance. We, we've often talked about sort of political demands related to developing countries, developing countries that governments that have said that they want to have more power or influence or something with regard to whether it's the DNS or interconnection pricing, et cetera. But it has not been easy in the context of large scale international negotiations and the IGF dialogues to really drill down into how do these develop, uh, how do these internet governance mechanisms actually affect development pro or con. Um, now, some stakeholders have said that that's not really necessary to talk about because in effect, uh, all of the existing institutions that we have are promoting development quite nicely and everything is working and there's really no need to spend much more time um, thinking about this. Uh, but and where uh, on the other hand, some people have said no, uh, it, it has not been addressed properly but they have not had the means, the mechanism, the political space to try to really make those connections. So really what we wanted to do here was to try to create a space where we could start to have a focused conversation about what is the real meaning of the term IG for D, if there is a real meaning. Um, I don't see on present trajectory that that's gonna be really uh, discussed in any real systematic way uh, in the IGF uh, in the main sessions and so on, or in other international institutions. So it seems to me that using the opportunity provided by the IGF workshops is the way to do this. Now what do I mean by a development agenda? By that I mean a holistic program of analysis and action intended to mainstream development considerations into global governance decision making across the range of important internet governance mechanisms. In the first instance, this is really fundamentally an analytical enterprise, monitoring trends, aggregating and organizing information, conducting analysis to assess progress and so on, to identify best practices, worst practices, good practices, share information about how are the different internet governance mechanisms addressing or fi perhaps failing to address uh, developmental issues. Uh, at the same time, of course, there's no point in just gathering information if you're not going to do anything with it. One could argue that this has to turn into action as well. And the hope would be that by organizing and providing access to information in a very user-friendly manner, that we might be able to encourage uh, internet governance institutions on a voluntary basis uh, to begin to move towards higher levels of development friendliness, if you would, or greater sensitivity to the developmental aspects of their various activities. So that's the basic concept. I mean, one could go beyond that, but of course, that all depends on the, how the dialogue goes and whether it becomes politically salient and attractive to enough parties. Um, prior to this, uh, we, there have been, this has been gestating for a while. I organized a brainstorming session with a number of government uh, representatives and other people uh, in Geneva at the Graduate Institute in 2007. At the IGF in Rio, we held a workshop which was attended by about 130 people, which had a fairly dynamic and, and robust dialogue about the desirability of doing a development agenda uh, and the lessons that could be learned from development agendas that have been pursued in other international contexts, such as the World Trade Organization and the World Intellectual Property Organization. We also had in Rio uh, a panel uh, of scholars talk about a development agenda at the Global Internet Governance Academic Network Conference. Um, so this event is really conceived of as a follow-up to the Rio discussion, moving beyond the general question of whether this might be desirable in principle to try to think about what would it actually consist of in practice. I'm hoping that we will focus on five questions in particular. 
First, how would we design a development agenda, drawing in particular on the lessons of other types of uh, development agenda experiences? You know, obviously in the case of internet governance where you have a highly distributed institutional architecture with many different institutions involved in managing different issue areas, it's impossible to have a sort of centrally organized type of development agenda involving strong, you know, treaty commitments and, and budgetary outlays and so on as you might say in the WTO. But it might be possible to define a looser, flexible kind of normative mechanism that would inform the work being carried out in the different institutions that would provide a means of essentially institutionalizing the issue on the agenda and making sure that people think about the development aspects as they go about working in the different functional spaces related to internet governance. So that's really uh, one of the big questions is how might we go about institutionalizing something like this? A second set of questions would be concerning what, what would actually uh, a development agenda consist of. And the first part of that, I would think, of course, would be capacity building. Uh, there's a lot of, of capacity building activities going on out there, but they don't accumulate in a way. Different institutions, different programs have different types of things happening. But what we don't have is very ready access to information about how do different internet governance mechanisms approach the question of capacity building, what steps do they take, etc. We've treated all these different aspects of IG as sort of standalone silos. So the idea would be to sort of organize information about capacity building, share experiences, share lessons learned so that we can identify things that maybe worked in institutional context A that might be applicable in context B, that type of thing. Another component, the, the third thing I'd like to talk about is possible possibility of institutional reforms or enhancements, if you don't like the word reforms. Um, in other words, if you were to look at the different internet governance mechanisms, both intergovernmental, private sector, multi-stakeholder, on uh, a sort of horizontal basis, can we identify procedural aspects of, for example, how do these institutions address questions of transparency, inclusive participation, what decision-making rules do they follow, and so on, how do those institutional aspects affect developmental possibilities and are there ways we might tweak them to improve them to make them more consistent with development friendly, et cetera. Here I see the real possibilities for synergies with another similar horizontal initiative underway and that is the APC Council of Europe UNECE initiative on the possible code of good practice for internet governance. Fourth element, uh, a fourth thing we might talk about finally, are the substantive policy issues that could be addressed in internet governance. And in order to try to identify, are the policy outputs that are coming out of governance mechanisms well suited to development? And, and I don't mean just, what, again, what developing country governments want, but development as a broad-based process involving non-state actors, et cetera. And here we could divide things as uh, the WIGIG and other uh, observers in this uh, IG process have into uh, those mechanisms pertaining to in, uh, infrastructure, such as domain names, IP addresses, technical standards, security, and so on, and those mechanisms pertaining more to information, communication, and content, the use of the internet, such as rule systems pertaining to intellectual property, trade, electronic commerce, privacy, spam, etc. What, which of the issues in those different spaces has the most uh, strong salience from a developmental perspective and should be addressed in the context of a, a development agenda? And the last thing I hope we'll talk about is going forward what we might do and what the role of the IGF could be. I think there's a need for more analytical work in this area and I'm contemplating the possibility of organizing a multi-author uh, edited volume uh, that would look at the way in which uh, development is addressed in the different internet governance mechanisms. And, and by the way, I'd like to mention there's a flyer in the back for a book that was just published a couple of days ago that uh, some of us are actually in that looks at global governance uh, from the perspective in particular of non-dominant stakeholders. If you're interested, you can take that. Um, and then um, possibility of programmatic work. 
could we form a dynamic coalition or contemplate other uh, types of steps within the context of the IGF, perhaps using the open forums of the governance institutions or doing a main session, so on. So a lot of different things to think about. Those are five that I hope we'll, we'll hear about in, in the discussion. So, okay, I think I've talked more than long enough. Uh, that's just by way of background. Uh, I will now turn to the speakers. Um, we'll start with Vitor Hansen from the government of Brazil. And uh, Vitor, thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Bill. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for, for coming. Um, um, I would like to, to, to start my speech uh, by saying and, and by trying to show that uh, the uh, risks, costs, and opportunities uh, offered by the information society for a wide variety of reasons are very unevenly distributed and to a great extent internet governance has to do with it. Um, internet access is more expensive, is less efficient in developing countries than in developed countries. And the, uh, developing countries have less opportunities than uh, developed countries in the internet economy for a variety of reasons. Some of these reasons have not, are uh, secondary effects of uh, uh, low level of development, so, um, and some of them are directly related with internet governance. So these are the, the aspects I want to address. Uh, we know that uh, internet access to, depends basically on access to communications infrastructure, so uh, depends on a certain level of uh, literacy and these are handicaps that do not uh, have to do directly with internet governance, but uh, some others do have, and the, the current uh, internet governance mechanisms have not helped uh, developing countries to, to, to overcome uh, these uh, barriers. Um, for example, I, I would mention um, uh, some, in terms of costs, uh, I already told you about it's, uh, that uh, internet access is more expensive. Uh, in terms of economy, we know that the participation of developing countries in the internet economy is negligible. Uh, it's very low. How, how, how many uh, companies that have a, a good market share in the internet economy uh, are uh, developing countries based? Um, what I would ask you, what's the market share of developing countries in the GTLD registry market? It is zero, zero percent. Uh, no GTLD registry operates from a developing country. Um, so internet governance mechanisms do have to do with it. Uh, even if we turn to CCTLDs, we will see that most uh, developing countries' CCTLDs are very, very weak. They, uh, they do not respond for uh, a, a relevant percentage of the uh, domains uh, used by, by, by people living in, in those countries. Um, so uh, uh, if we uh, so uh, um, if we are to build a development agenda for the internet, I think some uh, topics uh, should have particular attention um, at this precise moment. Um, uh, the reduction of internet connection costs is certainly a priority for developing countries. Um, as we know, for uh, historic uh, reasons, um, people from uh, developing countries pay to get, get to get connected with the main backbones, and uh, develop uh, people living in the developing countries get connected to uh, developed to, to developing countries for free through these same uh, connections that were uh, paid uh, and were built. Uh, and paid by uh, developing countries. So um, another aspect that should, I think, uh, be part of a development agenda would be uh, the establishment of a, a development-friendly intellectual, intellectual property regime. This, it's to a great extent, has to do uh, with the uh, uh, World Intellectual Property Organization development agenda. Uh, that was uh, mentioned by Bill here are some aspects in this uh, WIPO 
uh, development agenda are, are uh, information society and, and internet governance related. Um, Capacity building is, of course, uh, a need for developing countries. As we know, uh, non-English speakers, for example, uh, face an extra barrier to, 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 to get informed about uh, and to, to get involved in uh, internet governance debate. Uh, all, uh, English is overwhelmingly dominant in the technical internet language. So those people who, those countries, um, uh, in which language is not the, the false language uh, have this extra barrier. Uh, so uh, more in, uh, in more internationalized and accessible um, uh, documentation in various languages uh, would be relevant. Um, and um, so uh, I think these would, uh, and another, another aspect that I think in terms of uh, uh, building a, a development agenda now would be important um, is um, uh, the uh, adoption of open standards in the internet architecture. As we know, open standards tend to help developing countries to overcome uh, the, 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 uh, first move, the first mover's advantage in, in, the, in, in any market, uh, uh, while a patented uh, technologies tend to, to, to keep the, uh, the difference in, in level of access to technology. Um, now, uh, I think uh, we must understand that if the Internet is left to itself, if we don't uh, take specific action to facilitate uh, and to, to, to make a development agenda viable, these, um, these uh, inequalities will or rather deepen than diminish. So, uh, some action must be taken in order to, to, to help these barriers to be overcome. So um, we know that in developing countries, um, commercial, uh, commercial uh, in, in, some, in rural areas, in remote areas in, in developing countries, for example, um, providing commercial access to internet just doesn't pay off. Uh, so, uh, developing countries cannot rely only on the market forces in order to, to, to promote digital inclusion. Uh, some specific, cash, uh, specific actions must be taken in order to, to, to promote digital inclusion, and this is a role of basically governments, civil society, and uh, the private and responsible people in the private sector. So if, uh, internet governance is to be multi-stakeholder, so the burden of the uh, uh, internet governance has to be taken by all stakeholders. And not um, another, but uh, so uh, I, I, I highlighted here some aspects that I think are important uh, and that w that we see as important aspects today. But the fact is, uh, the fact is that uh, no one can predict what the internet will be within, say, five or ten years, and that's a consequence. No one can predict what will uh, be the priorities in, in the medium and the long term. So uh, I think uh, a development agenda, uh, besides um, addressing specific topics, should promote uh, a, a fair participation of developing countries in internet governance mechanisms. Um, and when I say uh, 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 fair participation and, and equal participation, I'm not only referring to the government sector. I think uh, the private sector in developing countries should participate in internet governance mechanisms. I unfortunately have not, uh, maybe because they, they just cannot attend, I have not met uh, many uh, business people from developing countries in, in this uh, forum. Uh, it's not easy to, 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 to stimulate uh, uh, the private initiative of developing countries and to, to make them uh, realize that the internet economy offers opportunity to them because it really does not off offer that much. And uh, this is a, if we want to build a multi-stakeholder internet governance model, we have to uh, involve all stakeholders in all the region in, in all regions of the globe, either in developing and developed countries in internet governance. Um, now, I I would like to to uh, to mention that uh, while uh, the while uh, the Tunis agenda is, is not 
a development agenda for the internet and what it was not meant to be so. I think the Tunis agenda has pointed out some uh, very important points in it and has, uh, 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 has um, suggested uh, some uh, uh, remedies to stimulate the participation of uh, development governments and uh, the, the, uh, in the internet uh, economy and involvement of internet uh, uh, developing countries in internet governance. Um, first of all, it uh, it, uh, it, uh, it um, um, sorry. Okay, it, uh, it prescribes a development-oriented, people-centered information society, um, and uh, prescribes uh, internet governance mechanisms in which uh, all governments will participate in, in on equal footing. Uh, what are uh, now the problems that we face in the Tunis agenda implementation now, and to, to engage uh, developing countries and to to make a development agenda viable uh, today. Um, the first one was pointed out by Bill, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> for the bell, yeah. The first one was... You're signaling yourself? Or? Yeah, <laughs> good bell. Uh, anyway, the first one was pointed out by Bill. Uh, there are several bodies dealing with internet governance uh, with very di different uh, decision-making cultures and a development agenda should uh, is only viable if we can integrate all these bodies and make all these bodies uh, engage in, in complementary actions. This is one of the, 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 challenge, the challenges that, that we face today. Um, the fact that these institutions have different cultures, different decision-making processes, uh, generates, uh, always generates a certain level of friction uh, uh, one example was uh, we could see it was in, in the participation of uh, the ITU Secretary General in an ICANN meeting. He, uh, uh, I think it was a very positive fact that uh, the Secretary General of ITU attended an ICANN meeting, and I think his presence could show that uh, the, both organizations have different cultures, different decision-making processes, uh, and and. The, in the view of the Brazilian government, uh, both institutions have positive aspects uh, and uh, each of them can learn with the other, but th it's a challenge to, 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 to establish dialogue. A um, uh, fourth uh, point that has to do with multi-stakeholder participation of developing countries in internet governance mechanism uh, is that uh, when it comes to civil society participation in developing countries, well, we know that the penetration of the internet in the developing world is very low. So, understandably, uh, so it's understandable that uh, less uh, uh, civil society representatives from the developing country will turn out in meetings like this. Uh, likewise, uh, the, the, uh, the internet economy uh, is very weak in developing countries. So, private sector again doesn't. Uh, is uh, in developing countries is not present to these meetings, so um, and uh, this is this is a challenge. So, um, given these challenges, I, I would like to point out some some solutions, uh, and I would like to start by, by presenting uh, one that was adopted in Brazil. What has Brazil done in order to stimulate the participation of either? private sector and civil society in internet governance. Uh, we have adopted a domestic uh, internet governance mechanism that is truly multi-stakeholder, which is based in our uh, internet uh, steering committee. Uh, private sector and, uh, and uh, civil society have elected representatives who attend uh, internal meetings of the uh, steering committee and who, of course, attend global meetings, so uh, we can, th this is a way to stimulate uh, uh, a developing country uh, participation uh, in, in a broad sense in multi-stakeholder mechanisms. Um, but, um, and uh, so, uh, so I, I think this is something we, we, we think is, is possible to do in the domestic level. 
And an external level, I think, one of the key points in, in, in promoting a, a development agenda for the internet is um, taking is, is paying attention to the uh, the, the uh, process of enhanced cooperation that was proposed in, in Tony's agenda, um, and to the, uh, uh, I think there are two essential points here. The first one is distinguishing um, technical governance from a public policy, and uh, so a development agenda should be uh, uh, should, should uh, is something that will be made viable through the uh, 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 of this uh, through, uh, through a, a public uh, policy um, initiative, and uh, I uh, I think uh, we 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 know that the uh, while we know that the IGF uh, cannot make decision on on uh, internet governance, we are not a decision making body. I think. Uh, what the IGF can do is uh, promote awareness of uh, the, the the need for a uh, development agenda, and I think this is what we we're trying to do here, and that was was done in Rio as well. Uh, but what that's the limit uh, for the IGF action, but uh, uh, concrete steps must be be, be taken in, in other institutions. Uh, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, I failed in my chair uh, duties to uh, remind everybody of what we had agreed, uh, or what I asked uh, in the email, so let me uh, reiterate uh, that the speakers hopefully can keep to about seven minutes um, so that we have some discussion uh, time as well. Um, that's my fault, sorry. Uh, I also failed to point out um, that Raul Echebria, who will be speaking next, uh, needs to leave around 5 o'clock because he's in the main session that's going on now. So um, he won't be able to be here. Or maybe we can do quick questions for him if anybody has any after his presentation. Uh, and then we'll just go on. So again, um, my apologies for my, uh, my failures. Um, I will now uh, program my little uh, iPhone to bark at you at six minutes. That'll, that way you'll know that you've got one minute left. So, Raul. Thank you. Uh, tell me when you start. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, um, thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this workshop. It's uh, this is a topic that is uh, is of, of very much interest for LACNIC, the organization in which I, I have the the honor to work. Um, this, I see this uh, this issue in, in two different dimensions. The the first one is uh, what um, the, as you trying to use the same words that, that Bill used, um, what the, the mechanisms, the existing mechanisms do regarding uh, the, the development agenda. So what LACNIC is trying to do in the, in, in regarding this point is uh, there is an opportunity for these uh, kind of organizations involved in internal governance to take uh, measures uh, in the promotion, to take an active role in the promotion of uh, information society, and uh, also in the uh, supporting the growth of the internet in, in the scope of, uh, in the area of, of service of each organization. Uh, so we have spent, um, uh, since the beginning, uh, since uh, LACNIC was created, the, the people that, that promoted, that worked in the creation of LACNIC had the vision that we should not be only a bureaucratic organization and we should take advan advantage of the, our capabilities for doing these kind of things. So currently we spend uh, uh, about uh, something between 40 and 50 percent of our budget in activities and projects that are oriented to support the development of information society and internet in the region. Um, so some of the initiatives, I, I will tell you some very quickly, but uh, we spend a lot of energies in things related with access, for example, and in infrastructure development in the region. We fund uh, projects, development projects itself, but it's not our main field. But we, we run uh, uh, training activities, uh, we support initiatives in different fields like uh, um, creation of IXPs, um, the um, root servers, dissemination of root servers in deployment of root servers in, in Latin America and the Caribbean, 
Uh, we have um, lectured many, organized many workshops uh, in, in about pitting in order to create the capacities in the region to, to let the operators and ISPs to get m uh, better uh, peering uh, agreements and understand better how the, the, the business w work and how the, the network work in order to uh, get uh, advantage in the negotiations of peerings and so um, I improve the interconnection and the infrastructure in the, in the region. And those activities have been uh, so successful. Um, we also support the, we, we work intensively in the research field, not making research, but uh, funding research. Uh, we have a, a program that is very known in the region that is named FRIDA. And uh, FRIDA is a very nice project, and we have spent more than $1 million in the last uh, four years, together with our partners, the Internet Society and, and the IDRC from Canada. And so we, we have uh, already funded more than 50 projects. And so we selected to, to work in the research field because uh, this is in, uh, where we think that we can make a difference. Because this is when we are really creating and developing capacities. And every time that we issue a call for, for applications uh, for the, the funding, uh, it is interesting because we receive probably 100 and 200 uh, proposals. And if, we, if you think that probably two or three researchers uh, were involved in each of them. So it, it means that we are mobilizing a, a large group of researchers. That So we are trying to, in, to promote the idea that uh, research is possible in the region. And those people probably, after that, uh, some of them get funds from us, but others will run, will run the projects by their own, or, or probably they will uh, look for uh, money from uh, other sources, but so the, the impact is, is much bigger than only uh, funding 50, 50 projects. Um, so we also work very much in the participation issue, as not only trying to promote the participation in LACNIC, what uh, obviously we do, uh, so we, um, we have been champions, of, it, it probably it's not very humble to say that, but we have been champions in promoting remote participation, uh, webcasting, um, real-time translation in all of our activities and um, other things. But, but uh, also we have uh, scholarship programs for promoting the attendance of people, the newcomers in, the, in, in our meetings. We organize uh, one meeting per year that is, is uh, very known in the region, and it's not only the LACNIC meeting, but it's also the host of many other meetings. Uh, meetings from other organizations like CCTLDs organizations or uh, ISPs organizations, but also forums, security, insecurity, interconnection, IPv6. So uh, we, we uh, also have an um, active role in the dissemination of information. We are, this is a, 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 um, an activity that we are trying to develop a, a bit more uh, this year. Um, as I said uh, before, I mentioned quickly, uh, so we do many things in the education area, also the training people and offering uh, training opportunities and supporting also um, as, uh, workshops and activities uh, organized by other uh, stakeholders. We, uh, every year we support in between uh, 15 and 20 uh, activities that are uh, organized in different countries in the region, beside those that are organized directly by us. Um, so this is, a, 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 when I, I say it, uh, everything in, in three or four minutes, it look impressive. But let me speak about the, the, the other dimension that I'm interested in, and probably this is the most important. The, the, the other dimension is, one thing is, is, is how do you use our organizations uh, for uh, promoting development, but the other is how we take advantage of IGF. We are, we are talking uh, uh, here in the framework of ICF. So we are trying to, to, to deal with development issues uh, since the beginning of ICF. And I think that we have not been very successful on that. Uh, as when I, I, I attended yesterday, for example, the, the, the um, open dialogue session on security, for example, and I really failed in, in understanding the links uh, between the, those things that were discussed with development. So this is, we have to, to introduce uh, more clearly the, the development perspective in the, in the debates, but not only for uh, leading the, the, 
not only for leading the discussions in each of the topics, but also for linking the discussions uh, uh, among the, all the topics. So, so this is something that we are losing. We, we, we come here to discuss transition uh, from IPv4 to IPv6. Uh, so child pornography, security, uh, so how I can work, um, said if uh, the, um, how to promote the access. But we are not talking about developments. I said on Monday, the, it is not only important how many people we connect to the internet, but uh, what is really important is uh, from where is these people coming? Uh, so it's not only uh, how to connect one more billion, but how connecting one more billion really impact in the development in, in, in many regions. So that's the point. So I think I promise and that I will uh, try to continue working on this issue since my role in the advisory group of ICF and uh, from uh, every position. But this is something that we have to do together, trying to, to, com to transform ICF really in an in a effective tool of promotion development. Thank you. Thank How you very much, Raul. Um, your, your timing was pretty, pretty close, and okay, both so. presentations have been really good food for thought. Um, since Raul does have to be in the main session, I'll just quickly ask if anybody has any questions on um, LACNIC or the more generalizable uh, points that he made about uh, the ways in which development is or isn't being addressed in IGF. Uh, lessons one might learn from the LACNIC experience that could generalize. Anything quickly on this? Uh, okay, we've just got one, and then please, please identify yourself, and we'll just make it brief, and then we'll go on to the rest. Thank you. Uh, is there a microphone for her? My name is Gayatri from Malaysia. I just wanted to ask you about the capacity building projects that you have where you say that there are about 50 projects and together with the funding that you have, how do you ensure the sustain sustainability of the capacity building and that it doesn't stop after a few years and then there's no continuity or to be able to engage through the ICT process? How do you ensure the sustainability? Thank you. I spoke probably uh, related with your question about three different things. One of them is the funding of research projects. Research projects uh, start and finish. Uh, so we, we provide funding, small grants. Uh, so it is, um, that's uh, one point. The other point is that we organize training activities. Um, so this is um, uh, something that we do by our own, with our own resources. Uh, but, uh, the other thing is that we support activities organized by others. Um, so we are not in charge of uh, ensuring the, the, the sustainability of those initiatives. Some of them, one of them is very famous, is the WALC. As we have been involved in the WALC for uh, the last uh, 10 years in different ways. Um, this is uh, becoming more and more strong initiative that is, a, um, is a, um, a workshop that is organized every year for uh, training uh, about 200 people. And in fact, the, the foundation that is in charge of the uh, of the um, organization of this workshop was awarded in, uh, a couple of weeks ago with the Sean Postel um, uh, award that is a, uh, a, a award that is given by the Internet Society, which is uh, very remarkable. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Raul, uh, for that interesting presentation. And uh, we understand if you have to be in the main session, if you whenever you want to just slide out uh, and uh, thanks for your contribution. Um, our next speaker will be Olga Cavelli, uh, advisor to the foreign ministry in Argentina. Olga. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's always very interesting to talk about development, which is a very relevant issue for our region, Latin America. I think v Victor mentioned very relevant uh, points about our region and that I won't go through them again and perhaps through all developing, developing countries in the world. But I think that our region uh, is really very special because it's the most, maybe you already know this, it's the most asymmetric region in the world. We have the biggest distance in between the, the richest and the poorest. And this uh, puts uh, a new level of difficulty in trying to promote the usage of the internet and the development of different policies that really brings the people that, that needs it to the internet, that brings development to small and medium <coughs> sorry, companies, that brings the companies of our countries to the new 
to the new uh, economy. Uh, in this aspect, I would like to to say some things from my advisory role uh, to the government and some other points I will make them on my own uh, capacity as a teacher and as a, as a people from, from developing, re developing region. Uh, I think that development agenda would be great to have a development agenda strategy for developing countries. I, uh, I totally agree with Raul that development issue is not being completely addressed through the, all the main sessions and the workshops. So I'm very glad that you, ha you, you have this space for, for debating this. Uh, we are perhaps not focusing that much all the debates on development. Um, this is uh, a general issue that I would like to comment. Also, inside our countries, we face another difficult uh, issue that uh, Bitter already mentioned, and that there are several institutions related with the government that has to do with internet. We have connectivity, we have content, we have um, media, we have education. Altogether, they really don't find a space to, to put them all the ideas together and to develop a strategy. And I think this is the, the big challenge for developing countries to, to write or, or to establish a strategy that holds all these different interests together towards the inclusion of developing countries in the new economy. In this regard, I, I, as I mentioned before, I, I agree with, with what Victor mentioned about the interconnection cost and the problem of the digital divide in our countries especially in, in Latin America, as I mentioned before, it's, it's really the most asymmetric region in the whole world. So this brings uh, other new challenges, different from Africa and from Asia. Um, and I would like to use my time to, to share with you some experiences that we have uh, done and we are trying to, to, to do in, in Argentina. Some of them has been done by our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where I, where I work as an advisor. Some of them have been promoted by some, some people involved in this process in different universities and in different uh, areas of capacity, ca capacity building in institutions. Uh, after the WISIS process, after the WISIS in Tunis, where I had the, really the, the, the honor to represent my country, we, we came with some new ideas to our ministry and we talk with to our minister, so we have now a new area devoted to follow all this internet governance process. Uh, since then we have been holding different meetings before each IGF, be before each uh, ICANN meeting, where we are also participating very actively, the most that we can, because we have very few and we have uh, not that much resources. Um, we, we, we have this area devoted to follow all this process and we, uh, we are trying to achieve a really a multi-stakeholder approach so we have meetings with the people from private sector, from academy, from civil society and we do that uh, in a monthly, monthly basis. We, we have been held in some with the very valuable help of LACNIC, they are always present in our meetings and in our uh, seminars, we are trying to build capacity among the government institutions and among other actors in, the re in, the, in Argentina in relation with all these issues uh, related with internet governance. Also, um, we had the idea of training our diplomats in, in technology issues and after we have done that, uh, this, we realize it's a very pioneer project. We haven't heard about this in other um, uh, diplomacy careers. So we, we proposed this idea to our ministry. He was very, w very interested, and so he, he gave us this opportunity. We have been doing this for the third year with a lot of success. It's a half-year program that goes through all the aspects of technology but focuses uh, part of it in internet governance and the future of the internet and development related with internet and with ICTs. Um, as Bill said, uh, and this is as a professor of uh, Instituto Tecnológico Buenos Aires, we are holding the first uh, internet governance school in Buenos Aires in April, in at the end of March, first, uh, first day of April. So if you're interested, you can contact us for, and I can give you more detailed information. Also, we ha Argentina has been very active in the 
of the regional process of information society, we proposed the formation of a, of a working group specially devoted to internet governance. What do, yeah. I'm, I'm in two minutes more. Uh, what we noticed is that our region is the less represented in all these internet governance meetings. And maybe you have noticed in the main sessions that when they give figures about the whole world, they, they just don't mention Latin America. And I wonder if the figures are very low or they just don't remember that we are a big area in the south. Uh, maybe we speak Spanish, not English or Portuguese, but we are there and we have a lot of people, uh, very interesting people and very diverse. Uh, it's, it's, it's really impressive. I'm impressed that they just don't mention us. And so in, in trying to bring more people, we, and we, we want to share also best, best practices and uh, we want to bring more countries to the internet governance process. We are uh, leading a working group among the region uh, which is uh, established in the framework of the regional uh, information society regional plan of action. Uh, also, we have been, ever, and that's myself, I'm, I don't know if we, it's myself that I've been very active in trying to establish remote par participation for the different meetings. It's very expensive to travel from Argentina to Geneva, from Argentina to almost everywhere, unless than Uruguay or Brazil or, or Chile. So um, in the MAG meetings where I'm a member, uh, I have asked, kindly asked uh, remote participation possibilities and we have achieved that with very good results. And also, uh, I have been involved in the remote hub participation in this IGF, and luckily, the highest participation is from Argentina, where my friend, uh, Monica, she is the president of the Internet Society chapter, where I'm the secretary, she's leading there a group of people that is getting very early up to be present in our meetings. So uh, the, the last thing I want to say, uh, it's about the future of IGF. I think this is a great experience about multi-stakeholder co cooperative uh, collaboration. I think it's brand new, especially for governments, and it's a challenge for governments to get involved in this process. And what I would like to see, and this is a personal opinion, is to move from leadership to a strategy in countries. What I see in Argentina is that what the things that we have achieved is mostly related with the personal involvement of some of us than, than a whole national strategy. And this would be what we should achieve and this would be my desire to, for the next future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olga. Um, that was great. Uh, our next speaker will be Henriette Estreisen. And I promise to stop when your iPhone goes off. Oh. Um, uh, for me, um, looking at, at, well, Bill asked actually in his background paper, what is IG, Internet Governance for Development? I think of it in two ways, and that is addressing development challenges through Internet Governance, and then secondly, addressing development challenges and developing country challenges, specifically inside IG processes. And I think the primary challenges are development challenges, and that is social and economic empowerment, um, inequality, gender division, exclusion by race, um, language, ability, literacy. Secondly, I think a primary development challenge is improving governance itself, unless we have better governments that are more um, accountable, that have the capacity to deliver and implement sustainably, we're not going to address development um, challenges. And then capacity building, and capacity building in a way brings it all together because governments need capacity um, to deliver and citizens need capacity to hold governments accounts uh, accountable. And we need institutions, we need media, we need civil society, we need research and educational institutions. Now to come back to, to a development agenda in internet governance, I think picking up also on the background paper that, that, that Bill uh, prepared for us, um, I think it's helpful to, to, to look at cross-cutting, horizontal interventions, as well as vertical issue-specific um, interventions. Horizontal interventions have actually been, well, all of them have been covered to some extent. I think that we really need to look at creating more common ground on what are the public policy principles in internet governance that, that we talk about. I think we still, we're getting closer, but there are still questions such as, 
um, do we see the internet as a public good or as a public good-like entity? And then do we base our public policy principles on that premise or not? So I think that's still something that needs to be resolved. I think um, institutional um, reform is critical, and I think it was mentioned in the opening as well. Um, how do we ensure that institutions are open, that they allow participation, that they make information accessible um, in, in meaningful ways? And we, you know, we, all, we all know how dispersed internet governance is. And it's not just about access to information. It's very easy for ICANN or for a national regulator or for a CCTLD to create a website and put content out there. But is that enough to make the information available to the people that need it? Do we need to look at common entry points, at, at, at clarification of, of how different levels of, of decisions impact on one another? How does privacy? and security uh, decision-making impact on rights of access, for example. And then um, capacity development. I think I probably don't need to say much about that. I think it's been covered, except I think possibly that element of capacity building, which, which relates to, to rights, rights awareness, to consumer um, awareness, to the kind of bottom-up pressure that keeps both government and industry accountable. I think, I think that needs more emphasis. Now, to, th to focus on some of the um, specific internet governance issues that I think a development agenda can address. Access, which is an issue that APC um, ha has been working on for a long time. Um, I think we really need to focus now on more specific issues, and I think having access as a general issue in the IGF has gone as far uh, as it can. And I think looking at the development issues specifically would be more helpful. For example, specific um, approaches to policy and regulation that balances market interests with public interest, responsibility of government with opportunity for business. I, th I, think, I think we need to focus on that more specifically from a developing country perspective. Things like internet service, uh, internet exchange points, we always say what a great idea they are, but we, we don't look at are they progressing, are they working, what are the barriers? Um, and then to, 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 to go on a little bit, I think there are also, in the access area, the, the importance of new divides that are emerging, the broadband divide. And on the one hand, the focus on mobile as a potential for creating access in developing countries could, in itself, create new device, divides. So I think we need to focus on those. And then I think maybe focusing on, you know, we talked about IPV, uh, IPv6 this morning, and Milton Mueller mentioned the, the changing roles of the regional internet registries, of which LACNIC is one. I think there are developing country-specific issues in there as well that, that we can focus on. And um, security, a um, big issue in, in the IGF. There are cost issues related to security and to, to, the, to the changing rule and policy environment around security on the internet, which could be quite serious for many developing countries and also for business in developing countries. So I think we need to focus on those as well from a development perspective. And then just another example would be related to rights and security is that people in developing countries access the internet very differently. Public access, if you access the internet through a tele center, how you can protect your own privacy and exercise your rights is different from, from if you access it through a contractual relationship with an individual ISP. Um, so these things need to be looked at. And also mobiles, you know, how do we ensure rights and openness um, for people who access the internet through mobile? And then um, open standards, I think, and, and openness, content. We need to look at that. I was really amazed that the ITU is saying that it is developing technical standards for child protection. You know, is the ITU dealing with, with child protection or dealing with, with technical standards? I think that's also something to look at. And, um, and then just to, to close on, on, on the role of, of the IGF. Um, I, think it's a, it's, I think we do need to create a loose coalition or a dy dynamic coalition of some kind of people that want to do this um, and focus on this. I agree with Olga and others that we need a special space in the IGF to do stock taking where different institutions that work on development, that work on inclusion, can come together and share and, and take stock. And um, 
I think that the, another way of doing this and taking this forward is, is keeping the public policy dialogue closer to the ground. I think we've had, we had a regional IGF in Latin America, we had one in East Africa, there was one in the Caribbean. I think those are important for the development agenda. 